Okay, we're going to do an example of correlation versus convolution um, in image processing. And here we're going to go over first, we're going to go over correlation. This is basically where we have an image, just like here, and these are going to be our sample intensities, 1 through 9, and a kernel. And basically, we're taking this kernel, we're multiplying the values, value by value, and summing them to get our output. Now, you might think, okay, this is getting bigger, and that's why our kernel is actually scaled. If you sum all these numbers, right, we're going to get a 1, um, which is kind of like our unity or scaled kernel value, so we get a decent output. Um, and in this case, this is all symmetric, right? Um, so if you can think of it like a dot product. It's 1 times 0, right, these first terms, plus 2 times 0.1 times 0.1 plus, and we keep going 3 times 0, right, and we keep going down 4 times 0.15 times 0.6, blah, 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 dot, 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 and that's going to equal some value x on our output. And that x is actually going to go right, boom, smack dab here in the middle. And for an entire image, right, this is going to keep going. This is just one little box because our kernel is only a 3 by 3. Our image is actually much bigger. This kernel is just going to slide over every piece, right, middle, middle, middle chunk, and get, get all those. Now you might be thinking, okay, how do we get the outer values, right? Because if I put my kernel here, we're going to get a couple cut off right here, a lot of values on this outside here where we don't have values. Um, in this case, there's different ways you can do it. You can either pad it with zeros, they call it zero padding, or you can actually, sometimes what they'll do is they'll flip these numbers, right? So instead of going four, five, six, five, four, five, you know, and it just kind of mirrors the opposite of what that was. Um, or extensions, sometimes it'll extend, so it's like a 2, 1, 3 up here, right? And a 3, a 6, and a 9, so kind of the same thing. Anyway, there's different methods that you can use to do that. Now, let's talk about convolution, which is almost um, the same thing. Basically, this kernel, though, gets rotated 180 degrees, right? So if this is A1, you know, this is A2, A3, B1, C1, you get the point for labeling what this kernel value is. Instead of this formula that we see here, we're going to do 1 times, when we flip it all around, that means this value is going to be in this corner. So that C3 is going to be multiplied by 1. I'm just going to write it in terms of C3 um, plus, and we're going to 2, when this gets rotated, this point 1 is going to be up there. That's C2, 2 times C2 plus dot, 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 dot. And that gives us our, you know, our x of our convolution value, and that's going to be our middle here now. So there you have it. Um, that's our graphical representation. What does this actually mean in the math? Well, here's a convolution case where we have the sum summation of this w, which is actually going to represent the function of our kernel, and f, which is our image function. Um, those are multiplied together after we sum values from a minus a to a and minus b to b. In our case, we have a and b are these values here. So we start in this middle case, right? Minus a, if we're saying our a is value is 1, don't get it confused with these a's that I wrote here. But our minus a would go to 0.1, right? And our plus a would be going to 0.1 here. That's where we're going to minus 1, 2.1 in this value. And here, the, basically the only difference between the convolution and the correlation is that this minus sign is a plus, right? And basically that just means if I'm going from the minus a to the plus a, then I start on this side and go backwards um, for one way and then the opposite for the other, hence essentially the 180 degree rotation that we're talking about here. Um, so you can see how this is summed for all of these values. And like I said, usually the, the w is scaled a lot of the time. Um, and that's, that's convolution, usually represented with this star, as opposed to correlation, which sometimes is, is can be shown with a circle kind of thing. It's like something like this for correlation, convolution. Um, there's different ways to draw it, different notations you'll see. Um, so let's go down to, both of these are actually, they have two important properties. Um, number one is what I talked about before. If the kernel's the same, when you rotate 180 degrees, it doesn't gonna make a difference. So they're actually both going to be equal if the kernel is symmetric about both axes, which was like what we saw in our case here. Um, number one, this property applies to both shift invariant and linear. Um, those are both very important properties for both of these. 
Um, and there's different, if you don't understand what those mean, there's other simpler tutorials you can look at to understand what both shift invariant and linear means. Basically means it can be shifted and it's linear. There's linear sum, right? When we add up these functions, it's kind of a linear combination of, of the previous values. Um, in the convolution case now, it is also commutative and associative. Thanks.